We want a landslide that is too big to rig. Too big to rig. Donald Trump is already claiming without a shred of evidence that the 2024 presidential election is going to be rigged, even though it's still eight months away. He's also trying to rewrite the history of January 6th by lifting up the rioters and making the attack a cornerstone of his bid to return to the White House. Joining us now is Michigan Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson. Welcome, Madam Secretary. Madam Secretary, so you and I know there is this push and pull when you want to talk about elections and the challenges of elections, that you do that without then suppressing the vote, that you don't actually demotivate people from voting this from the Wall Street Journal about what Donald Trump is saying. There is no way to effectively toe this line, said David Becker, director of the Nonpartisan Center for Election Innovation and Research, focused on election administration. When you still want voters to turn out, but you're telling them it's rigged, it's no surprise that some of them are on the fence about that. Is he actually shooting himself in the foot? Well, we'll see. And we certainly saw that in 2020. When you create confusion and chaos and inject fear into the process, there are ramifications for that. And we have to notice that the adversaries to democracy, whether they come through candidates or other entities, their goal is to deter people from participating and cause people to give up on their own voice and their own vote. And so the ramifications of that for someone running for president are that you may cause your own base to not turn out. Mm -hmm. Madam Secretary, you and I have had the, the good fortune of being on a number of calls over the past year talking about the preparation and coordination among the states uh, to make sure that not only, you know, are the, the stuff that you traditionally do uh, for elections tight and in place, but that there is accounting for this, this X factor, this bullying of the process by supporters of Donald Trump just putting it on the street the way it is. Um, uh, how do you see that right now? How are your, your colleagues and, and fellow uh, election officials around the country um, assessing their preparedness and readiness when you have uh, a party and a presidential candidate lying about your ability to hold fair elections? Well, first, we are rooted in the fact that our elections are more secure and transparent than ever before. And Michigan's elections nationally was just ranked second in the nation, having come up from being ranked 31st just five years ago. So in the reality is our elections are safe and secure, and we have to stay rooted in that fact and not allow the noise to deter us. We are constantly trying to overcome the lies and the threats that that those lies spawn for our community. But we're also trying to be very clear to voters, just as we were in 2020, to give them the confidence and clarity and certainty that they need to participate, no matter who they vote for in this election. That's our job, to make sure that people believe in their vote and their voice, however they choose to express it and cast it. And to have to do that in the, in, in the noisy moment that we're in is really challenging, but we're rooted in that truth. And we have been for the last several years, so we're just going to keep doing our jobs. You know, Madam Secretary, it seems to me that Donald Trump is laying the same groundwork that he laid in 2016 and in the lead up to the election in 2020, so that if if and if things do not go his way, if he is in fact not successful on election day and winning, um, you know, the electoral college and becoming so he can become the next president, he's going to say that look, I told you, I, we thought it was too big to rig, but they rigged it anyway. This is his playbook. How are you and other secretaries of states um, thinking about and working with uh, statewide elected officials in your various states to guard against something like this? It is sowing distrust in the election, but in the election writ large, but also it's setting up uh, a, a narrative and it's a playbook he's used before. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we have the really difference between now and 2020 is that a lot of this came out after that he lost the election in 2020. The the lawsuits that were uh, really just PR campaigns to build this narrative you talk about. The dozens were filed after the election. They were dismissed. And now what we're seeing in Michigan and in Nevada and other battleground states is lawsuits being filed now to create this false narrative uh, that somehow our elections are anything other than safe and secure. But the truth is on our side and, and the law is on our side. And the vast majority of American people are on the side of wanting their voices to be heard and their votes to count and, and 
deserving to have that rightly placed faith in the process. So this is the, the battlefront that we are in for the next six months, and we need every American citizen, no matter what side of the aisle they sit on, to recognize that the truth needs to rule the day, and we have to do all we can to ensure citizens have rightly placed faith in the process and continue to speak truth to the bullies who would otherwise try to deter us or distract us from that reality. Madam Secretary, you were also contending with the RNC suing Michigan over the state's voter rolls. You have called this a PR campaign masquerading as a meritless lawsuit. I still have to imagine some of it takes you away from the work you are actually trying to do, that it is not just a distraction for the people of Michigan, but also a distraction for your office. Yeah, truly. I mean, our work is to make sure our elections are secure and that uh, voters know how to participate in the process and can have faith in the process. We now have this additional battlefront we need to fight, misinformation and lies that are trying to confuse citizens about whether even to believe that their voice matters. Uh, and so we'll continue to fight that battlefront. It's now just expanded our work, and it's one of the reasons we're so exhausted, having done this work for the last several years, but we realize that our job is to meet this moment and deliver fair elections to the people, even if there are candidates out there trying to deter or, or dismantle the process, and even if threats come our way as we walk this path. Michael, so could I ask you a quick question, because you used a word and that, were, that, you, that you and the secretary have been on calls where you are coordinating, and this week I had the secretary on with the secretary of state from Nevada, Cisco Aguilar. And all of my, the mentions in my tweets were like, were you coordinating all caps? As though somehow secretaries of state coordinating is a bad thing. So they're not going to believe it from Secretary Benson. Perhaps they will believe if they hear from you how coordination is actually something American voters yeah, should want. Yeah, uh, just, just stop being stupid, people. You know, these folks have got to, in, the, in light of coming off of 2020, and knowing what we're going into in 2024, you better be grateful and thankful that our secretaries of states and our election boards and election officials are talking to each other. That's what coordination is. It is how do you handle this problem that, we just, that we're now seeing in our state? How have you handled this situation? Uh, or you should be aware of what we're picking up. That's the level of conversation that's important when you're dealing with a group of citizens led by a presidential candidate who are trying to already set in motion um, a, a narrative that this process is untrustworthy and that the officials who are running it are rigging the system. So be grateful that you have someone like Secretary Benson and her colleagues actually talking to each other and, and talking to professionals in the electoral space, people who are looking at voting systems, who are looking at voting patterns, people who are trying to figure out where the next bomb is going to come from in terms of, you know, something on the Internet or something at a, at a, voting, at a voting booth. So it's, it's an important coordination. As a matter of Secretary, I thank you for it. You have been one of the leading voices in this space. Um, and I think the American people should be appreciative of the fact that you, in a state like Michigan, we're already seeing the crazy play out, right? And so it's not like you're, not like you're you know, unconcerned here. You have a concerned interest in making sure your elections go off well. And it's good that you are an example to others and others are talking with you and you're talking with them. I think it's a good thing. So y'all just need to chill with some morning coffee. Yes, here, here. Cheers and to relax Secretary Benson. about the work because the secretary got it. Cheers <laughs> to Secretary Benson and the secretaries for their coordination because the people who are at the, the polls on election day, the workers, these are volunteers. Yes. The cornerstone of our democracy are free, fair, and open elections. And the secretaries of state are an important part of that. Thank you. Yes. And we're just doing our jobs. We're proud to do our jobs. And the coordination comes from the fact that we are facing a nationally coordinated effort to deter our elections and deter people from participating in our elections. So we absolutely need a nationally coordinated response. And that's what myself and colleagues in Georgia and Nevada and Arizona and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania and many other states recognize. And that's why we are working with the federal government and others to ensure we are locked arms to protect our citizens and our voters against this threat. And it is a threat. All right, Michigan Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson, thank you, thank you for your work and being with us this morning.